one of the core mandates of higher education is to address the challenges of society. The common notion of agriculture is changing and it is commendable that one of the main focuses of Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology is on this area. Its College of Agriculture and Renewable Natural Resources is one of a kind in Ghana. Uh, the history of this college dates back to 1982 when a crop of lecturers from the Faculty of Agriculture found it necessary that um, the natural resources of the country were being degraded and needed a middle level manpower to try and uh, stem that process. So as a result, they constituted what was called the Institute of Renewable Natural Resources with a small group of students and a small crop of lecturers. And then in 2005, I actually came into the system from England in 1994. 1990 after my master's sorry and then um, in 2005 I had then been gone for my PhD and come back the then vice chancellor of the university professor Andam may his soul rest in peace he decided that um, he was going to constitute the university into colleges either through they were faculty of this faculty of that and department of this so a number of departments will form a faculty and a number of faculties will also form a college. As a result, our Institute of Renewable Natural Resources was converted to a faculty, the Faculty of Renewable Natural Resources, and combined with agriculture as the initial uh, college. The college in the university is one of the smallest. We have a quality staff. About 98 percent hold their terminal degrees, that is PhD. And we have other categories of staff, professors, associate professors, senior lecturers, some also senior research fellows, and then lecturer. It's, that is normally distributed. The upgrading of staff after you've gotten your terminal degree, the PhD, the rest is for you. In fact, in academic, they say either you publish or you perish. What it means is that, as a lecturer, your formal duty is to research and teach. So it's the research aspect of it that will make you progress. And I can assure you, the college is doing well, publishing high impact factor journals. So we have the professors. If somebody is a professor, it means that they have so many journals, irritable journals. So it tells you that since we have full professors, actually professors in senior research, it is top notch. And we are trying to mentor the younger ones also to move. So the training after your terminal degree is by hard work. And it is through research especially. And of course your teaching is part of it. The college has two faculties, faculties of agriculture and renewable natural resources. It is made up of 10 departments which are under the two broad faculties. The Faculty of Renewable Natural Resources has the departments of Wildlife and Range Management, Sylvie Culture and Forest Management, Forest Resource Technology, Wood Science Technology, Fisheries and Agroforestry. While the Faculty of Agriculture has a department of crop and soil sciences, animal science, horticulture, as well as agricultural economics, agribusiness, and extension. We have a mandate, and our mandate is to train people in the sustainable management of natural resources, sustainable utilization of resources sustainable agriculture and rural livelihoods and that is our main focus. We have partnerships with um, our collaborators like uh, the CSIR, the various sections of the CSIR like Forestry Research Institute of Ghana or the Forestry Commission. 
we also have the Fisheries Commission and the Fisheries uh, Ministry of Fisheries and Aquaculture Development, the Ministry of Agriculture. I mean, just to mention a few. Um, there are some NGOs too that are also affiliated to us because um, um, they work in the rural areas and they work mostly with our Bureau of Integrated Rural Development. I don't know if you will be going there, um, but they, they are called BIRD, that is the acronym, B-I-R-D, Bureau of Integrated Rural Development. They work with so many and they work with the rural folk and all that. Yeah, on the international scene, yes, we have a lot of collaborators in terms of research and um, training. And it cuts across so many continents. You can find some in the, on the American continent, in Europe, in Southeast Asia, in um, uh, Canada. I personally have taken students to Finland where they spend a semester there. And then the, our, their students also came here and spent a semester. So we have that collaboration. We are the only uh, rural development center in university-based research center in, in the country at the moment, focusing mainly on rural development. So we take pride in that, and we have um, done a lot of work uh, for the rural community. We consult for rural bank, uh, rural bank. We consult for World Bank. We consult for. Um, government institution, ministries, Ghana Education Service, Ministry of Food and Agriculture, and all those ministries we work with, uh, particularly Ministry of uh, Rural Development. Uh, again, we also work with other foreign uh, institutions, um, like United Nations University in Tokyo, uh, Ibadan University in Nigeria, Cape Town University in South Africa, and some more. Uh, within the country, we also collaborate with uh, UDS, um, Legon, and uh, the other, uh, especially uh, Cape Coast University, we do not sort of mix with them. Yeah. Um, we are the interface between the university and, and the rural communities. Our aim is to carry out research uh, on the rural poverty, uh, livelihoods, and issues like that, bring the problems of the rural community to the university, and try to resolve the problem. We research into those programs and then we send back the information back to the communities by organizing workshops um, and community fora to brief them on outcomes of our research activities. Uh, currently, we are working for United uh, USAID and on their West African projects. And this project involves all the West African countries and we monitor all the uh, programs they are funding in West Africa. So we, we travel around to monitor and issue reports on, on these projects to the United States. We are doing those with some universities in, from the US and together uh, we are implementing this project. Uh, again, we work very closely with other local institutions so that we can uh, strongly together promote rural development in this country. Um, I think that uh, apart from our research activities that we carry on, the academic staff here also do some teaching in, in various uh, faculties. Uh, I personally uh, do teaching in rural development and uh, the others are doing livelihoods and gender issues and issues like that. Um, we currently occupy this temporary structure here and, we, and that's one of, our, one of our major challenges because it doesn't give us enough rooms to think on board and our staff strength is also very small and we are trying to increase the staff strength but we cannot do that when uh, we, we have limited our office space so that's our greatest challenge that we, we face here in other department. We realized that the university, we have projected the university quite very well in, in the rural communities. And therefore, we need the support of the university to do more by way of increasing our staff strength and also helping us to um, build new facilities for, for the burial. Students from the college are grouped to be efficient in tackling different agricultural issues through the formation 
of Productive Student Association. POTSA is a Kenya ST um, association. And this year we've been able to make alliance with the International Forestry Student Association. Since the formation of the Forest Resource Technology Student Association, um, the programs we've done so far and the projects we've done so far um, have engaged students very well in equipping them in what um, people popularly say as uh, being entrepreneurs. Uh, mostly school is not about just coming and getting a job. Also people learn what they get from the system and take it outside to work. Since the association is one of the youngest associations in the College of Agri and Natural Resource, um, all the leaders that has been on administration so far has done their best to improve on the stability of the associations to benefit students. This year we've been able to initiate a Beehive project which mostly have been uh, equipping students and also we hope in the next few years to train students to be entrepreneurs in Beehive project. AFSA Kenya USA was formed in 2011 to look at the welfare and the needs of agribusiness students in the Faculty of Agriculture. The association basically looks at fostering stronger relationship among students in the agribusiness departments whilst inculcating the spirit of entrepreneurship in our members. We offer services to students and also to students outside the, the faculty. Services outside the faculty include we go into various SHSs, that's SHS store, to talk to the students, to introduce the program agribusiness management to the student body for them to know what we are about. Yeah. As part of the vision of the association, which is inculcating the spirit of entrepreneurship in our members, we organize yearly entrepreneurship clinics, which we bring on board industry players in the agribusiness sector to come and inspire our members about how to establish their own businesses. And moving forward, also we organize the idea challenge where students are coached about the ideas and given some sort of seed funding to start their businesses. The association IAS was formed in 1947 and it was named uh, Ghana Agriculture Students, whereby the students in KNUST offering the Bachelor of Science in Agriculture form as an association, as a group, as an organization where they can have to discuss a lot of pertinent issues discussing or affecting the agriculture industry in Ghana. So it was later named IAS in 2005 when we joined the IAS World Organization, an international association outside Ghana in Belgium. The association has organized a lot of programs, a lot of projects. Uh, with projects, we've organized a poultry project, we've organized a mushroom project, where students can have practical experiences, where students can have the practical skills to help them aside the theory they learn in class. And with the programs, we've had a lot of programs, seminars, conferences, uh, opportunity, job opportunities, scholarship opportunities for students. And also we've, we've had a welfare fund, a project, a welfare support fund for students where they are going to help the needy students in the Faculty of Agriculture. Renewable Natural Resource Students Association was formed in 1985 after the Faculty of Renewable Natural Resources was established in Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. Since then, every student admitted to read BSc Aquaculture and Water Resources Management as well as natural resource management automat automatically forms part of the Renewable Natural Resource Students Association. RENASA represents the Student Council in the Faculty of Renewable Natural Resources. It serves as the voice of students of the association. And what it does is that it presents issues affecting the association for a smooth academic environment. It takes the form of negotiations and lobbying on behalf of the student's body. Uh, RENASA ha has been very active in promoting the academic excellence of students in the faculty. This is achieved through the organization of seminars, projects, conferences and other educational activities. And in realization of this, the association has liaised with other international organizations like the International Forestry Students Association, where students are able to embark on exchange programs, go overseas, travel abroad, and have a feel of what actually happens there with respect to managing our natural resources. When 
intend to actually increase the number of faculties and the number of students. You are aware now that uh, next year we are going to be flooded with students who are, who are coming from a double track. So we need the infrastructure and we need to increase the intake. But we also need the staff. Talking to the Vice Chancellor recently, he told me that um, Legon has got uh, the green light to employ some more lecturers. And I think by extension, we'll also be giving the same. So if they do that, then we can actually also increase and uh, give access to um, uh, those who need university education. We don't want to continue eternally uh, on students always coming to campus here to get education. We want to take education to them. So we are also building a satellite campus at Obuasi where people can go there instead of coming here. You know, some of our faculty will have been relocated there and we are all included. We are on the ideal platform, distance learning, so that those of you who are in work and don't have time to come and be sleeping in, uh, <laughs> four in a room and that kind of stuff, you can also benefit from uh, university education. You don't have to leave work to benefit from university education. So that is our target. and to bring as many as possible into the, uh, the mainstream of university education. But our emphasis now is going on higher education. We want people to get master's degrees. We want them to get doctorate degrees. Now, it looks like almost everybody is getting a BSc or a BA degree or something, you know. But I think the, the focus now is higher education, is to bring more people into master's degrees and PhD degrees. In the undergraduate level, we don't offer scholarship per se. The presumption is that the government is paying for the tuition fee. So all undergraduate students, if you're a Ghanaian, you have a scholarship. Notwithstanding that, there's MasterCard Foundation the university that students, including those in this college, also assess. The SRC have uh, kids will be in shop. So, these are some of the funds. And the students themselves, through the association Kanasa, is trying to establish a fund to assist the needy but brilliant students. For graduate students, they have funding. Most of them are research based. Agra, for instance, sponsored both MPhil and PhD candidates. So, there are funding from other sources in the collaboration with the college and the students themselves. So, for graduate, some are receiving funding. But basically, those students also pay through their own resources. The College of Agriculture and Natural Resources, as the name implies, we are focused on the livelihoods, feeding the nation and Africa at large. So, we intend to be a center of excellence both in teaching and practical agriculture. That's what we are doing. In doing so, in fact, this academic year, if widen our scope of students who can be admitted into the college. So we expect that by 2025, we have students or graduates, as you say, from this college who are poised to take agriculture into another level. And that is our objective. And God willing, we will be successful when we come to evaluate our plan period. Our, our vision is to be one of the lead uh, institutions in the training of natural resource scientists, uh, agricultural scientists, and also those in rural livelihoods. I encourage um, those on the African continent who are looking for a place where they can see excellence to come here and either collaborate with us, study here, research with us, and then Together, we'll push Africa forward.